The use of ether as an anesthetic in the mid-19th century was heralded as one of the greatest advances in surgical technology to date. Dripped onto a mask such as this one, ether was inhaled through the mouth and nose by the patient. Its discovery is one that brought the alleviation of pain to millions, but bitter pain and jealousy to its discoverers. On October 16, 1846, the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia, a seminal event in medical history, took place at Massachusetts General Hospital. Before anesthetics, surgery was an incredibly painful and horrific experience. Surgeons had few options for dulling the intense pain. The most common techniques were applying the patient with opium or alcohol until almost passed out and then employing several strong men to hold the patient down while a quick surgery was performed. Surgery was very limited uh, because patient pain, movement, uh, and anxiety. Uh, surgeons were not able to um, perform many procedures because the patient would move. They were not able to perform uh, many procedures that would take a long time, uh, simply because the patient couldn't tolerate it. Patients would scream with agony throughout the entire procedure. It wasn't uncommon for people to commit suicide rather than go through the nightmare of surgery. In the 1830s, it became increasingly popular for college students to throw parties known as ether frolics. Students discovered that when they sniffed the pungent and volatile ether, they would get high. At the same time, nitrous oxide or laughing gas was being demonstrated by marketers across the country. Customers paid 25 cents to watch fellow audience members make fools of themselves while intoxicated by the gas. In December of 1844, a dentist named Horace Wells attended one of these exhibitions. Nitrous oxide was available to the general population and it was essentially a party. People would come and get a bag of nitrous oxide and inhale it and there would ensue uh, laughter and uh, laughter at just about anything. Uh, the interesting part about this is that um, it wasn't, nitrous oxide wasn't really known to be an, an anesthetic agent or to relieve pain um, until uh, it was observed that uh, at one of these nitrous oxide frolics someone injured their leg and didn't realize that they had injured their leg so they were too busy laughing to, uh, to realize that their leg was injured. The man badly injured his leg and Wells asked him if it hurt. The volunteer was stunned at the sight of his own blood as he had felt no pain. Wells was so convinced that nitrous oxide could be used as an anesthetic for dental surgery that he had an assistant remove one of his own teeth while under its influence. He described the experience as no more painful than the prick of a pin. Wells went and talked to uh, uh, Dr. Warren at the, at the Mass General Hospital and uh, explained to him that what he had observed and arranged to have a demonstration. Now, what happened was that the patient came in and uh, uh, Wells administered nitrous oxide to the patient. And once surgery was started, the patient screamed in pain. And uh, so, of course, Dr. Warren uh, then started to have doubts about whether this would, was in fact an uh, anesthetic agent. Uh, at the time, there were lots of, of uh, uh, agents that were proposed to be anesthetic agents, and, and, and they were all proving to be not effective. They immediately called the procedure a failure and proclaimed Wells a humbug. Despite the setback, Wells continued to try to convince doctors of the pain-relieving benefits of nitrous oxide. Wells contacted two colleagues, a former dental student, Dr. William Morton, and Morton's general medical studies teacher, Dr. Charles Jackson. But neither Morton nor Jackson showed much interest in working with Wells. Months later, Morton encountered a dental patient experiencing intense pain fears. He asked Jackson, a chemist, for nitrous oxide. Jackson replied that he didn't have any, but that ether would do just the same. Morton experimented with ether for dental surgery and quickly became convinced it would work for hospital surgery. Morton then scheduled his own demonstration with Massachusetts General Hospital Chief Surgeon John Warren. Morton knew the significance of ether as a surgical anesthetic. He also knew that he who controlled its sales would become extremely wealthy. 
Ether, having been around for centuries, could not be patented, so Morton added some odor masking impurities to ether and called the concoction Latheon. History was made that October in 1846 when Warren excised a bulging tumor from a Mr. Gilbert Abbott who claimed that he had felt no pain. So Dr. Uh, uh, Morton came to the general where a patient had a, uh, a tumor in his neck, uh, administered anesthesia. At that time he administered anesthesia through a, a glass globe in which the ether was in the globe and the patient inhaled air through the globe and the ether vapor was drawn into the patient along with the air. The patient fell asleep and uh, Dr. Warren was able to remove the tumor from the patient's neck. The patient didn't move, uh, the patient didn't scream and Dr. Warren was so impressed that he turned once the tumor was extracted and turned to the audience. At that time medical students watched surgery in an amphitheater uh, Dr. Warren turned and said, uh, gentlemen, this is no humbug. The incredible news spread the world over. Hoping to make a great deal of money, Morton kept the true composition of Latheon secret, although it wasn't long before surgeons recognized the smell of Latheon as ether. Morton tried to fight the widespread use of ether, petitioning Congress to reward him as the discoverer of ether. Congress was aware of ether's ancient origins and no money was awarded. Dr. Morton died of a stroke in 1868. His tombstone's inscription proclaimed that he was the sole discoverer of ether and anesthesia. When Dr. Jackson saw this, he went insane and was placed in an asylum in Somerville, Massachusetts, where he remained until his death in 1880. Dr. Wells eventually left dentistry and became addicted to chloroform while attempting experiments with the chemical. Under its effects, he assaulted a woman with acid and while in prison committed suicide. The room where the operation took place still stands. It's in the Bullfinch Building at Massachusetts General Hospital. In 1965, it and the operating room now called the Ether Dome were declared National Historic Landmarks. Although October 16, 1846 was the first public demonstration of ether as an anesthetic, there is evidence that a Dr. Crawford Long performed such surgery as early as 1842. However, he did not publish his findings until 1848, so many scholars continue to attribute Morton, Jackson, and Wells with varying degrees of credit for the contribution to humanity. Suffice it to say that the discovery of anesthesia made possible an entirely new era of surgery. There are countless surgical procedures that would not be possible without it. Anesthesia has lessened the suffering of and saved the lives of millions.